Hey, you making lemonade from lemon? Oh, hello, hello, hello. Are we live? We are live. It's not showing out on here. Can you see us? See if you can see us. There we go. All right. Our internet connection or something was going haywire. She says hi. How's the weather where you are? Yeah, because you're in North Carolina, so you're a little bit colder than us. Hey, Karen. Hey, Karen. Now, we just started. We actually, um, we were running late trying to get the kids situated. Is it too dark to you? I don't think so. Usually we have this light on, I think, don't we? It's okay. <laughs> if we can see ourselves, I'm sure they can see us. You know, what's so crazy is warmer here. That's what we were just talking about. How She's gone country farms. It's amazing to me, though. What's so crazy is it got colder here than we've ever gotten real quick. But then hey, we're back up to seven. our normal set. Like it was 72 today. I was hunting and actually I was kind of sweating. So it's, it's weird how we had a cold snap and then all of a sudden warm back up. Do it's been so? very, very beautiful. I cannot complain at all. <laughs> she likes warmer weather, so it's been good for her. Last last week, we were on like sweater weather. I mean, it got down to 20 and 25 and ran the fire pretty much the whole all week. week. Uh, but this week, we're actually just going to kick back air on. So She's going to country farm, said everything looks fine. But. Okay, good. Yeah, I think it's going to be 75 here tomorrow. Now, we do have some rain coming in, so it should... Cool it back off that's this weekend. Per I mean, to me, that's perfect. <laughs> like when he was in the woods hunting and I was out cleaning the front porches and stuff off with the broom, and I was thinking, man, this is just so nice. Short, just a short sleeve shirt and some little legging things. And I was thinking, man, this is just nice. It's just nice. I, I kind of like the 50s and 60s. Probably not really the 30s and 40s as much, probably the 50s and 60s. Karen said 45 and rain here. I'm so happy for our warm up. <laughs> 45 is not a warm up to us. <laughs> oh my gosh, 45, Misty would be miserable. I would, that's miserable. Anything under 60 is miserable for me. Hey, Farmstead Talk. Making lemons. Hey, Look, Josh. Lemonade from Lemon said, I don't like it much colder than 65. Yeah, I, I agree there. I don't, I'm not, you know, I think, I, I don't want to say the older I get, so I'm not that old, I guess. Huh? Probably a little gray here, but. In the uh, yard, Homestead. Thank you for joining us from Australia. That's uh, that's Josh. He changed his name. Um, we talked about that last week. Did we talk about that last week? I'm sorry, Josh. Um, what's so crazy is since we have more animals now, though, as much as I love the 20s and 30s, but now that we have animals, it worries me that when it's cold or they're freezing their water. So I don't care for it to get freezing anymore. I like it to be around that 45, 55 range. Uh, you know, it's just because I got to worry about a calf being born or I got to worry about Star everything else. Setter. I'm glad you could join hey, us Kathy. this afternoon. This afternoon? It's evening. Nice. It's time to go to sleep. What are you talking Whatever. about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got it really cold. Yeah. Piper Homestead, how are you? Yes, 41 degrees. What? If we got any kind of weather like that, if, like I, there was somebody we talked to today from the from the uh, the UP in North Michigan, and they were talking about how they were looking for you know twenty and thirty degrees today, and that was a warmer day than usual, and they had foot feet of snow already, and I'm thinking, man, I, I couldn't imagine that. Thank you, Karen. You know, I accidentally published that today yeah, <laughs> that to was supposed tomorrow. to be our video for tomorrow and i sat down and was working on it and just for whatever reason i was like oh it's done let me go ahead and publish it and i was so, like mm. i hope you haven't had too many macs over overload <laughs> in the last 24 hours because that was not supposed to happen so yeah we usually don't publish a video the same day that we go live but I sat down to work on it. He does all the editing for the video and I do all of the extra stuff, the little links that you see pop up and the stuff on the end and the stuff in the description. So like we kind of work together to do it. And um, because it is, I mean, it's like, it can be very time consuming. By the time you record all of your stuff, you get it all edited and then you get all the extra stuff to it, done to it. So anyway, we share responsibilities. And so I was working on my part and I just, I don't know what came over me. I just 
She lost her mind. Lost her marble. <laughs> I finished it and I was like, okay, it's ready. Let me go ahead and publish it. And then I just totally, I don't know. Well, th but thank you. I do just very basic sewing. I'm not an expert seamstress by any means. But I can do basic stuff like make pillows, make curtains. I do all of our alterations. Um, I have made um, like ruffles that I've added to um, curtains and stuff like that. Like I took regular curtains in my girl's room that were just white standard curtains. And I dressed them up with real tight ruffles and made them look just real girly for almost no money. So I have. It has been a blessing that I was taught to do basic things like that um, because even though my sewing machine was an expense in the beginning, I would say it's seven years old, seven and a half years right. old. Um, I've had no problems with it whatsoever, and it has by all means um, paid for itself. So um, even little things you can make like – they're pillowcase dresses, shorts for boys, super, super easy. Um, there are, I don't remember what the name of the bags are, but there are some super, I've made them, but I don't remember. Um, Thanks, Piper. What the name of the bag is, but it's so, so easy to make. Um, can I remember the name of it? They're real, real big, bulky, like sacks. Um, but anyway, they're really easy to make. And um, so thank y'all for that. If you ever have somebody that is willing to teach you the basics of sewing, take that opportunity. It's worth it. Thanks, Rocky Homestead. And I saw uh, Kathy say uh, and Piper both say that they were getting warm at 37. Wow. So that's pretty pretty intense there in the North Star State. Yeah. And imagine. speaking of, we were discussing last week it being so cold. And y'all saw on the video of Colby's last last video where I had went in to the other side of the stanchion and built a huge hay bed and put a heat lamp out there because I was, we are on baby watch still. Um, I was afraid that Allie was going to go into labor in the middle of the night and it got down to 29, 28, 29. About 26 actually one night. So I was like, I know Tuesday night, last Tuesday night. Hey, Grammy Karen. So I was like, I know for sure she's going to have this baby. It's going to be freezing Visible. outside in the middle of the night. And I'm worried that it's going to go into hyperthermia and die. So I went and made a big, huge bed of hay and put that heat lamp out there. And I was like, if worse come to worse, she can go in there. And I know the calf will be fine as long as um, the baby gets in the hay. Um, so. But thankfully, she didn't. Um, this week would be a better week, but I just don't know. It's going to be in the rain this next week. So we, she's going, she, we just she, keep anticipating and nothing yeah, happens. It's amazing to me because um, she, she, I mean, she's ready. I had, a, I had a guy come today to the farm. He, he drove by and he said, that calf is, I mean, that cow's just have a calf. I mean, I like said, no, we've been saying that for like three weeks. She can't he even said, walk. yeah, he said, I mean, her, her, ba she's, she's bagging up. And she's I was like, she's huge. been bagging up as if she keeps on, it's going to be hanging down to her knees, you know, but as a first time heifer, she is just huge. Yeah. And so, and what's so crazy is she's having a, a, a calf from, <laughs> a from miniature. a miniature Jersey. So I'm anxious to see this baby. Yeah. Thank you, Grammy Pick Karen. And that's what we were discussing earlier was the sewing pillow. Um, and if you ever have somebody that will teach you to sew, please take that opportunity. It's so worth it. Hey, since it's going to be cold next week, can I do a sewing video and you do a milking video? No. <laughs> <laughs> you um, know, North Star, I, I used to say no way. She'll never have twins or a cow. You know, it's never a good track record when a cow has twins. But this cow is so big. I mean, it just blows my mind. It really does. It blows my mind how big. Uh, she is, and she's a she's a low line jersey. She, she, she's not a big cow, so um, she's I mean she has gained some kind of weight with this this calf. Um, but you know we had encouragement because our we had another little beef cow born uh, just the other day, a little baldy, and and during that cold weather, I mean it's thriving, it's doing great. So as long as we can get Allie to take her baby when her baby's you know born, I think we'll be in good shape. Um, we're gonna let her have the colostrum, and then we will start milking back. And um, 
hopefully not me and her wrestling inside the stanchion. Hopefully she'll be doing good. I think if she's stanchion. not real tender and sore, like some hey, um, TNS dogs and drag flyers, some farm. nursing Thanks, mothers, farm. regardless of what type of animal it is, will get tender. So I think as long as she's not tender, she'll be fine. Yeah. Um, but I think if she's real tender, um, I think she may not appreciate him you know, sticking that pump on her. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand milk her for a little bit just to make sure we get the colostrum fully out. And, uh, and of course, have it for a bottle for the calf if all of a sudden we do get colostrum still. But we're going to let the calf milk for a little bit. Let her get used to a, a calf because the most important thing with Allie uh, of course, it's built for us, but really the most important thing is her calf, especially right. in this coolness that we're in. Uh, we, of course, are used to a milking cow with Elsa, but um, we just want to make sure she takes this calf. That's that's the main Rocky concern. Rocky said, said, I had newborn rabbits, and it got down to 10 degrees, and what? they all made it. I mean, it's amazing to me, and I'm hey, sure Amy. that the baby would have been fine, even if it would have been born in the cold weather. I'm thinking, in my head, I'm thinking, well, the baby's going to be wet. It's in the middle of the night. I'm not going to be able to be watching it in the middle of the night. And it's free. It's below freezing. So, you know, I was concerned, but God makes these animals to be able to survive in all kinds of different type um, weather situations, regardless. You know, he made them to thrive for the most part. I, I, you know, I, I've got to. But there are babies. Too, we've got to. You know, we. We've got to do an update on these these pigs, ma'am. It's gotten, you know, chilly at night still for us at 45, 50. So the two big American guinea hogs have, like, adopted these other pigs. So they will literally lay there. And now now our our American guinea hog is, is pregnant, too. She's not um, she's not bagging up, so she's not having the telltale signs of having, a, having piglets yet. But what's amazing is the last two nights we've went hunting, and, and I walk back beside the, the, the where the pigs are, and they've got the, the five little piglets inside them. They're circled around them in the hay, and it's like they're just nesting around them. It is the coolest thing. So I thought that was cool that, that even the, the male boar was almost taking on these these little piglets and like becoming like a, a like an adopted daddy to them. It is the coolest thing. And that's happened the last two days. I mean, they've sat right there between them, and it's like they've huddled up in a little nest. And it's, it's amazing. And what's even more amazing to me is, you know, we talked to y'all about, I showed y'all on a video one day when I was outside the difference between the two and how the American guinea hogs, they don't um, break up the ground. They don't poop all over the place. Um, but the other ones had literally tilled a, a humongous area and I showed y'all that in the video and how they had pooped everywhere and you know when I went out there two two days ago and I was looking at the difference on the ground they're not tilling anymore did you notice that well they've tilled everything they wanted and got whatever they wanted out of the ground so. but they're not they're not tilling like they were when they first come I we've thought been that was very on, interesting we've been deep bedding one area with hay and they'll go through that hay and pick what they want and then they'll sleep they'll lay in it it's, it's the coolest thing they we've really enjoyed the little yorkshires i mean i we've never had feeder hogs never had american guinea hog either but we've been around american guinea hog and and we've had them again now for a long time but uh the I yorkshire the, the yorkshire and we we really we really enjoyed it but it's you know really I'm not, in my thinking was i wonder if they kind of started taking on the traits of the american guinea hogs so i know like it's, it's unique uh, i did not look for the poop but i did notice that they were not tilling the ground like they were so hey, my thinking i was wondering i wonder if they are picking up traits like the american know. guinea hogs because they are the older right. more mature dom you know dominant ones so i thought that was very interesting all right, Piper Homestead said, have you made curtains before? I always make mine out of flat sheets, very inexpensive material. I have not ever made them from scratch, but this material that you see right here behind me, I had an extra set of those and I altered that to make a shower curtain and a short curtain, I don't know, of lance, is that what you would call it? Right. Um, and then I also, like I said, I I had some solid whites that I bought. They were fairly inexpensive. 
but then I bought some material to make ruffles. So I added what normally would probably cost 50 or $60 a panel for those ruffled, that ruffled look that, uh, cause the girl's room is like a antique yeah. uh, vintage style lacy right so that's what their room is decorated as so instead of paying 50 or 60 dollars a panel i just went and got another set of cheap curtains and altered those and put on there and it was like a fourth of the price um that was years ago but i've never made curtains from total scratch but they are very very easy to make uh north star prep stater Yes, they, they need to be, we've been deep bedding because they need to be moved to the new area. Um, we're moving them in a sippy pasture, basically across the, there will be forest pigs. The hey, little are. Farm. The I'm only scared. thing is they're still kind of small and we're scared to get out of the, of the pig fence and the temporary pig fence and then we're going to mate. So we, we have not moved them to the new area yet just because if they're going to a temporary fence and we're right now they're in permanent fencing. Yeah. Hey, you Narrow know, Way Farm, thank you for joining us. I didn't get to say hey a while ago. And you know, what? I think I'm probably more concerned as of them getting out of something getting in and getting them because we have lots of coyotes and stuff like that in the woods. They get started on homestead. So thank you, Grammy Karen. Um, so I probably am more concerned about that because we've discussed we are going to train them in their permanent fencing with, with hot wire. the hot wire. Yeah. So I think before we even move them across, I think that they should be well enough trained not to get out. But I am because they are still so small. I am more concerned about hey, something, Freedom something getting in and eating them is See, probably not, my biggest concern. I'm not as worried about them getting eat inside the fence because we're gonna have it hot. I, I do think if we if we don't teach them to, to to respect the fence, if they do get out, even though they'll hang around there, I don't believe they have any like Missy said, I don't think they'll have any protection. Um so that's why we've got to make sure they're trained to the fence and understand that's a barrier for them, but also a barrier for anything else getting into them. Uh one good thing is our great Pyrenees, um I saw when we went to Polyface, which I thought was the coolest thing, we went to Polyface, um when Joel Salton had his, had, uh, I mean, he had great Pyrenees like us, but he actually had his great Pyrenees inside the yep, fences I remember that with now. the pig and also with he the sheep. Did. And I thought that was a cool concept. Not that we're going to keep our great Pyrenees with the pig all the time, but it may be one of those things that we, because they're used to the great Pyrenees and the great Until Pyrenees is used to them, bigger, we may put him wise. in, that, put her in there That's just to kind of say, you know, I mean, just to kind of watch out because she is very protective. Yeah, uh, I totally forgotten about that. Yeah, I mean, I thought, I thought it was the coolest thing. So I think that was what we're going to do. We're going to try to put them in there. So thank you, Grammy Karen. For for us, it was the calling. I mean, you know, especially with homeschooling and homesteading, um, it, it was a calling for us. It's not something that. When we got married almost 13 years ago that I would have said, hey, I'm going to homeschool my children. Um, I, that thought actually never crossed my mind. Um, but the older that Aiden got, because he's the oldest, and the older the rest of our children got, it was just a calling, you know. We homeschool for three reasons. We always say it's for sustainability, stewardship, and through that we get satisfaction. So that's kind of what we always look at our homesteading journey as. Um, Little Feet Farm Homestead. Uh, I'm thinking about just buying a calf and acting like it's hers um, because <laughs> we can't seem to have this calf. So I might just buy one and act like it. we just had a calf. <laughs> no, I mean, we have been anticipating this baby for weeks. And I mean, like last week, I was like, there's no way by next life she will have this baby. And she is still holding on to that baby. Freedom Homestead, we do. Our Greek Pyrenees moves around the whole farm. However, when the pigs move out to the temporary, I really think I'm going to put her with them just for a little bit anyway. Yeah, we, we've been homeschooling for a while. It's funny because I was telling a guy, somebody came by today and he said, uh, what do you think? I mean, what do you call yourself doing? I mean, we were talking about homestead and homeschooling. And I told him, I said, it's funny because Aiden, our oldest, kind of understands that this is a, a newer lifestyle over the last few years. However... For my girls and of course my youngest son, 
it's just life for them. You know, they're used to this. Oh, it's just cool. kind of been what they've been accustomed to. Uh, my son plays guitar like I do. So he was in there doing some of the school and he was just playing guitar and he, he has no understanding of what real school is. You know, if they want a snack, they pause it and <laughs> they come in here and get a snack. And I, I don't know if that's a good thing to say, but that's, it's so much easier. So they have no idea what real reality of uh, going to school is and not doing farm chores. Hey, so. food, forest perm permaculture. Hey, Howie. Yeah, just get it out of the way, Hallie. Just, just tell everybody, hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to do it right, right there. Hey, cra hey, Crazy Critter, place to be. Glad you could join us. So, you know, last week we talked about temperatures, and we had low temperatures. Now we're like at 75. So what is the temperatures around some of the other ones? I know we've got yeah, extra we people like here to now. Hear, so. We like to hear what it's like everywhere else. I agree, Miss Kathy. Hey, hey, the gardener. Hey, two making, and a half acres. Making lemonade from lemons. I totally agree. It's 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 definitely not for everybody, but I think when God calls you to do it and you're obedient, you will definitely reap the blessings from that. Um, I wish that every mother had the opportunity to homeschool their their children, but we realize that some don't, and um. <laughs> we are very thankful that we're able to do that. Allen Farm, we feel you. Being in South Mississippi, we got the same kind of temperature. We feel you. That's amazing, Miss Kathy. It uh, is very rewarding. <laughs> I'm not going to play guitar tonight. I love playing. But Aiden, Why don't no, you get Aiden too? No. He can play behind us for just a Actually, in some of the videos, and we've never prefaced this, but uh, no, he's, he's good. He's, uh, he's no, not the right baby. now. He'll do, the baby. We'll do it later on because actually a lot of our videos has a preface of him playing or me playing. We both did. We have about five videos that we did the, the prelude and postlude music to the uh, to the video. I remember um, one. That was one mm, of our very five. first ones. So. so we're gonna we'll come and do it another time. We'll play on some videos. Seventy nine here in Florida. Yeah, that's, that's about right. the 40s and for Grammy Karen. You know what's so crazy is we actually have some of our spring Kentucky. and summer grass. It's starting to green back up. It died last week because of all the crazy, wind, crazy weather. North central Arkansas. But now it's starting to kind of come back, which I'm not upset about, I guess. 70 in North Carolina. I'm going to let him play them one song. He may not do it. He's really good, y'all. I mean, to be his age, he's really good. I'm going to go get him. Let him play one song. <laughs> he can just stand behind us. They can hear. We'll see. I, I doubt Aiden may play. I don't know if he's going to play. We'll see. Uh, our, our our grass is starting to green back up a little bit. Our rye grass, the bad thing about it, because we know it's it's going to get cold again, it's, it's stagnating our rye grass, which is our cool crop, and it's making our – Green grass come back up, so that means I hope if it if all of a sudden it goes gold again, we're gonna lose all the grass because of the the heat for one grass and the coolness for the other. Uh, we've been watching a ton of Greg Judy lately. I love Greg Judy, um, but we've been watching a lot of him trying to learn better farm management on the grass quality. So we're gonna see if we can do that too. So I'm anxious to see if he's really gonna play, y'all. He didn't even want to play in one, uh, one or two of the videos that we did. <laughs> Just now planting my rye. Wow, we planted ours back in October. Uh, the early part of October is usually when we try to plant our rye. Uh, it's struggling coming up just because we, do, we don't do uh, a lot of fertilizer. So. I had to bribe him. <laughs> bribe him? We ain't paying him to do that. We're not paying him. This. He said he didn't agree to it, but he come for us. Daddy, you got his coffee yet? Y'all let us know if y'all can hear him. Thank you. 
All right, I'm gonna read you some of the comments. Nice, sounds great. Wow, great job. Go Aiden, loud and clear. I can hear him and he plays very good. Wow, really good. I will get a max of three inch in pinion heels. That might, might not have been us. Good job. My brother and granddaughter play guitar, and he's really good. Great job. Good job, Aiden. Lots of clapping. Thanks, y'all. Y'all were his first audience. That was awesome. That was great. At least you have Thank to pay him later, probably. <laughs> no, I didn't bribe him with, with payment. Um, but... That he loves to play guitar, and we've learned several songs over the past few years, but um, he's never played for anybody, and that's what I went back there and told him, Aiden. I was like, listen, you learned to play this guitar for people to be able to listen and enjoy this. You got to come in here and do this. So I was glad that he, he did. Thank y'all. Had to get the baby situated, so. He's learned... What about eight or ten songs now? Yeah, probably so. Hey, Michigan Mike. He's been playing for. Hey, Menzies. Hey, I'm Polish Gardens. A few years now, so we're very proud of him. Hopefully, he'll get that courage to get up in front of church one day, or yeah. even maybe at the at our nursing home ministry and be able to play for some people. So, thank y'all so much. I know he's. Um, he will be encouraged to go back and be able to read some of these <laughs> plans for Thanksgiving. We're gonna probably be with a uh, family. What's the 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 famous painting? Was it Norman Rockwell that did the famous Thanksgiving painting? We have uh, a picture. Yeah, we re we that. redid that picture. We had a. Uh, it was when JJ was born. So it was last oh, year, geez. wasn't it? We recreated it last year. It was really cute. Yeah, so it was pretty. It was pretty good. So. Thank you, Little Feet Farm on the Dead. Um, yeah, we recreated that. We've got um, our local family, Colby's side of the family, is getting together for lunch that day. So we're going to do that. Um, Karen, he, he doesn't take lessons anymore. I, I basically taught him. Uh, so we, we try to teach him. I know this is bad. And if anybody, there's music teachers in here. I'm very sorry. Uh, I try to teach him by ear to let him understand music. By, by hearing i was not in agreement uh, to this misty probably. wanted him to do notes but most true musicians well can we go back not most true most artistic musicians tend to be ones who can play by ear and sing by ear so uh she's against it now the our girls two girls are in piano yeah. and they're being taught by a piano teacher and <laughs> they have to read music yeah. and i would prefer him to know how to them all to know how to do that because if they're ever given a song or put on the spot and need to know how to play the notes then they'll know how to do it right then but if they listen they can hear that takes way more work it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> hit a big band in the 80s okay little feet did he have a mullet or did he have a hair was he a hair band or a mullet band? Because that really does matter. If you're My an 80s brother band. is self taught drums and guitar. <laughs> Uh, yes. That takes talent. I mean, in my opinion, it takes talent. I can't play anything. Uh, we grew up playing, so we can play guitars, mandolins, you know, most stringed instruments. So, long curly hair. Did he throw it out? Little face, a little feet farm homestead. I'm a, I'm a pianist, but play the guitar mostly by ear. Yeah. And it's amazing to me how many people can, if you know, if you learn one, like you can easily pick up <laughs> several other things. Everybody needed a mullet or a big fro in, a, in the hairband days. So. North Star said if they can learn both ways, that's the best. 
Yeah, we. Well, I mean, we grew up around it. I, most of my family play music in some form or fashion. Two and a half acres says my neighbor was trying to teach me for three months and I just gave up. <laughs> hey, Southern Bless Homestead. I'll leave it to the youngsters. <laughs> I wish that I would have been put in something that would have carried me on because I was in more physically act activities. And as the older you get, of course, you can't continue to carry on those things. So I would have loved to pick up a talent that would have stayed with me. Yeah. And see, for instance, uh, that's a good one. The gardener, um, because we, we do play by ear. That's like me. I can, I can follow along with a lot of the chord progressions, uh, and, and notes on a scale if they're simplified a little bit. So I can, but pretty much I'm again, I'll listen to a few times. We can, we can, we can take it. If he can play by ear, he should learn sheet music. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for coming, TNS Dogs. Drag I'm, I'm sure eventually we'll get there. He'll be able to, hopefully, when they do both. Amy, that's awesome. <laughs> all we can play is the radio. That's all yeah. I can play is the radio. Yeah, before before we were big farming, that, that's kind of, that was my therapy. I liked music more than anything. Now we, I pretty much listen to music all the time, but I, I I love being on the farm for therapy, I think. But that's Aiden is his go through thing is music too. So I'm very pleased with that. <laughs> Alan Farm, what part of um what part of Louisiana are you in? Are you in the north part or the south part? Spanish for college. Oh my gosh. If I had to go back to school, I would not be I would happy cry. Ever. Would you cry? I'd cry. I, we we both were not fans of school. However, if I could have picked something different, I love my profession, but if I could go back, I, we've discussed horticulture. Um, agriculture is probably where I, my interest is now the most. Of course, knowing that 15 years ago, I never thought I would be where I'm at. So, Northeast Louisiana. Okay. That's not too terribly far. Um, let me take I want to pose this question to y'all too. What if? What are some of the things that you're Cannabis trying to? Um, what are some of the things that you're trying to learn right now uh, on the homestead or farm? For us, I'll be honest with you, we've tried to really pursue market gardening a little bit more and 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 trying to find ways to organic garden better um, and have a, a thriving garden uh, awesome in every farm. season. And then also, we're trying to learn almost like a a, a food forest permaculture trying to do a lot more uh, with that uh, and trying to understand food for us a little bit more how we and and, and I've been watching a lot of uh, uh, minimalists lately too to try to understand uh, you know we, we bought some katook seed we bought some pigeon pea seed we bought some um, uh, moringa some turmeric and so we're going to try to build that that canopy style food forest uh, we're not in tropical areas like Florida but we are considered subtropical here in South Mississippi so I'm really wanting to do that and have that approach on our farm because that's something that, to me, that helps us become a little bit more sustainable in the spot that we were not in before. So. Alan Farm said my major is ag business. It was social work. Mm. Um, two and a half acres says my bride and I was thinking about homeschooling. What program do y'all use? We use a Becca. There are a lot of options out there. Um, I started with Abeka, and Abeka has worked for us. Um, Bob Jones is is one. God's um, World. God's World is one. Ace. The Sun, I think it's called the Sun Shine, maybe is one. Um, so there's lots and lots of different programs out there. Like I said, we started Aiden off with Abeka, and it just worked for us. So um, we've stuck with that, and we've been very happy now. A Becca is designed um, for all in one stop shop school, right? But it is school is specifically designed for teachers. So there is some busy work in there that you will hear some people that have this idea of homeschooling that have never homeschooled and they think, well, homeschooling should only be done in X amount of time or whatever. Um, but it actually is designed for. Um, a full day's worth of school. So anyway, we cut out the busy stuff. If it's something that is extra 
work problems that we already know how to do, we don't do it. If it's um, something that's not pertaining to a particular subject or something that we're studying, we just boot all of that out um, and we zone in and focus on um, specifics and, and specific details. And that has worked for us. So I hope that helps. Always feel free to email us or private message us about uh, homeschooling questions. I would love to help y'all. We've done it for a lot of years. Okay. Aiden's 11. So kitchen back up. Preschool. Goats. Um, so we don't know. Yeah. Goats. I'm Unpolished sorry. Gardens. We can't help you there. <laughs> goats. Yeah, I can't help you with goats. Compost. That's awesome. Uh, that's awesome to learn about compost. We love compost. and that's, That helps us. Now, we're trying to do it in mass quantities now. So, um, Penny and us plantation we we do a pile method of, of compost for our chicken bedding and then we do not barrels but we have built um basically out of uh mesh frames mesh steel basically and they're like cylinders yeah. style and so we can flip those over refill them up to help turn your compost a little bit easier so that's that's a cool concept there if you're looking and for a different Karen concept says, learning how to make soap thanks to misty <laughs> that is awesome i'm so pumped to hear you're the third person that has reached out and told me right. that y'all are making soap because of my video and that is so awesome it's, like it's, that's what it's all yeah, about this instant us. gratification to me the soap mm -hmm. does because you know, not that you can use it tomorrow but it allows you to say you know what we've done this we've made this as a homestead product so I, kudos to you karen it's really um, cool so the video is in, I would think it's everything you need to know. Um, the recipe is on there. I also have links to all of the Amazon stuff that we bought that you would need to make. So um, from the lye to the oils to the um, molds, the whole to cut in the soap, the essential oils, everything. So that that's why we do what we do because we want people to say, "Hey, y'all taught us how to do something." So the gardener, I'm scared of. Uh, I, I'd like to learn more about mushrooms. I've seen a lot of people growing mushrooms. I love wild foraging. We've done a lot of that lately, especially with our elderberries and uh, blackberries and, and dewberries and things like that. But that that's a cool concept there too. Um, learn mushrooms. I don't even like mushrooms. I, he does. I do. I really do. Uh, Piper Homestead. Oh man, yeah. I, you know what? I saw someone build a. They had problems with with chicken hawks, and then also they had problems with coyotes. So what they did, they took an old cattle trailer that was kind of dilapidated. You know, got it to where they could move it, but it was just a field kind of cattle trailer. And they made their chicken coops out of that. So it allows, and they opened the bottom, put just screen mesh on it, and it allowed them to move it like a trailer, like a camper but allowed them to move it in their field. And they had a, a permaculture chicken mobile. And it's Freedom a Homestead really cool thing. is building. I'm not sure if they're still with us, but they're building a chicken coop as well. They're in the process of adding that to their homestead. Yes. Amy Wall, we, we thought about buying ginger since we were buying turmeric, the same person that we bought the organic gardener that we bought the turmeric from said that ginger may not grow in our area. We are subtropical, but we're right on the line of where we need to be to grow ginger. Uh, we, we thought about growing in our greenhouse though, um, but that we, that has crossed our mind too. Little Feet Farms Homestead said learning more about pigs before I get them. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. Learning about cows and my five month old calf is teaching me. Absolutely. <laughs> and fruit gardening. That's awesome. Yeah, we, fruit we've too. really been talking about orchard style stuff like that too. We, we, we did learn a little bit more about fruit this last year. We had a good harvest Sunlight, on some of our things. So in. I knew it was sun something. Yeah. So I called it sunshine, didn't I? <laughs> sunlight. That's right. Delightful Cottage. Thank you. Thank you. It's sunlight. That's right. Let's see. That's the homeschool curriculum that I was referring to. I called it sunshine, but it is sunlight. Sorry about that, y'all. Gardening. Yes. Oh, gosh. Our garden last year was phenomenal. This year, I just I wasn't pleased with it. So we're, we're but see, this year we tried to do full organic, full non GMO. So we're, we're going to not, not, change that we're going to go with that but we're going to go with the definite definite thicker lasagna method uh and especially the salad tarps are a big play in that uh, we love our salad tarps it's school at home is that another program 
the delightful cottage is that what you're saying it's school at home we used it until this year it must be another program so some good info here yeah it definitely is yeah man craig i know what about this weather i mean you're like us i mean we had 20 degrees last week we lost tons of stuff our greenhouse wasn't lost. heated to where we needed it to be all of my peppers and so we lost a lot of peppers and then turned around and then now it's 75 we lost all outside. of our peas so my grass don't know what it's doing the deer don't know what they're doing it's just been a crazy i did not get the heaters in my greenhouse in enough time to save my basil so i lost all three of my basil plants which is my absolutely favorite herb right. to use but everything else did fine. Rosemary looks fine. Lavender's fine. Sage is fine. Um, our oranges still look fine. The strawberries look fine. Lemon trees look fine. But I lost my basil. It's a goner. The compost bins are huge things. Two and a half acres and the raised beds. I tell you, with raised gardening, do huviculture beds. Uh, they have done, we've done four or five different kind of raised beds. What? Hugo culture beds are great. Now, if you can keep cats, rabbits, squirrels, roosters, roosters out of them, you'll be good to go. Why don't y'all ask him what happened to the fence that got put up that took an hour to put up? <sighs> We're not even going to talk about that. Hugo culture beds. Y'all ask awesome. him. Ask him what happened to the fence. Okay, so here we so go. So the cat here gets in the go. beds here and they look we, amazing. Here we go. They look amazing. <laughs> and the cat gets in the bed and starts scratching. I'm talking from the roots up. So I'm like, there's no saving this. I mean, they just, up, he's just uprooted everything. And then somebody throws roosters out of the pen that I put them in to give my hands a break, which my hands look a million times better, by the way. And then the roosters, what the cats didn't scratch up, the roosters almost ate the tops off. So I spent an hour, an hour, putting up a fence while the baby was asleep one day to try to save what was left. And then I go out there the next day and it's taken down. Are you finished? I hope y'all see this <laughs> face because it is the face of okay, not... So happiness we tried if you watched our video a few weeks ago misty had the fences up and we we got the agrabon out put the agrabon on it yeah y'all saw my fences come down but the agrabon would not hold to the fencing misty's uh pretty tomato tomato stick plastic wrap well, fencing. it did its job. Keep the cats out and keep the roosters out. But if we didn't cover it, guys, it would all burned up anyway with the 20 degree weather. So it is winter <laughs> gardening items. But not everything like like broccoli cannot is a handle winter frozen gardening weather. Craig, item. Craig Smith, will will broccoli get hurt in frozen weather? I think it will. I think it will. I don't think so. I think it will. Then why are we planting in the winter? Because it's a cool crop, but that doesn't mean it needs to be burned by frozenness. <laughs> so, anyways, we we uh, we shot the cat. No, I'm joking. Please, I was just joke. It's just a joke. Just joking. We did shoot the roosters. He's no. lying. We're actually going to harvest those roosters when we harvest the broilers in about four weeks. So, and they're doing amazing. They are doing we amazing. Forgot to tell them about the chickens. They, they will be amazing. going to the Shocker Nut Fence Friday. So we will have a video of uh, them going to the Shocker Nut and going outside and they will start be maneuvering outside for the next four weeks of their life. Um, but you know, they're doing really good. And Misty, if you remember all the problems we were having with the first set of incubate or the last set of incubation chickens, the rest of them are doing great. Uh, Broody and her, he uh, her friend's chickens are doing great. So everything is, all chickens are in a good place right now and like missy said taking the roosters mm -hmm. out truly did help our yes. hens um just giving them a break for a little bit they're so. getting their feathers back finally um so little feet farm homestead said i'm happy to see younger generations getting into homesteading it really seems to be a um i don't want to use the word fad that's not what i'm looking for a um movement. growing right movement a growing trend um which is, is great. Uh, I think it's amazing. 
The 54 is getting harder. I cannot totally understand that. Penniless Plantation said, it's a pain, but on a raised bed, I built a box like a frame with a plastic bird netting all mm -hmm. over it and made latches on the bottom. That's to keep what the frame on the bed. That's Penniless Plantation, what we're going to do is um, we're going to take um, on our Hugo Coil. Our, we have a lot of raised beds. And if y'all ever seen our little greenhouse where our raised beds are, uh, the two new Hugo Culture beds are made for covering. So what we're going to do with them this season just kind of call us off guard. We're getting as cold as it did. We're going to build PVC pipe covers, basically make mini greenhouses for them. It's a very cheap, economical way to be able to put something on and then take it back off and put it, you know, up, up in the, the big greenhouse. So um, one Hugo Culture bed is doing really good. The other one is the one that's struggling just because so much animal Damage. problems there. So. We're, we may even try to replant some of that because we have our lettuce and then we have our grow bags. If y'all haven't seen our, our lettuce growing in our greenhouse, it's doing really good too. But this weather has been crazy for us. We went from hot to cold. It was so hot a few weeks ago, our plum tree was blooming again. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. But our then the 20 degrees, too. but then our 20 degree weather like smoked them, you know, but now we're back mm -hmm. up to 78. So I've got my ryegrass is struggling. My green grass is starting to come back, so it all been messed up for long. So. Amy's got a spread of trees there. That's awesome. Yeah. Loving Amy Farm says the barn cats here were trying to use my in ground garden. So fenced it in and put a separate area of dirt for the cats to use instead. We put we put like a box for the cats. We've done everything for the cats, and they still want to use our gardens more than anywhere else. I say cats. There's only one cat now. Yeah, we come back from HOA and one of them was yeah. gone. But I, we're trying to do the best that we can with what we got. I do think the fence would have helped the situation and not letting the roosters out. See, look at that. Look at that. Tell her, Craig. I always heard, I will say this, Our usually we had snow not last year, but the year before. The year before, our greens were up. Our, you know, we, we do grow uh, collards and mustards, if y'all seen. But we had a great harvest two years ago, and it snowed on them, and they never hurt, but they were more mature. I did notice this 20-degree freeze, even though they've never been hurt before. Some of them got kind of burned on that. That was a little unique thing for us this time, too. Yeah, they're all really small, too. Um. I'm Henry, trying to teach Tony, my grandkids about homeschooling, but electronics won. <laughs> uh, we had that same temperature situation, Henry, Henry, Tony. Yeah. Penniless Plantation, thank you. We'll try that out. We love essential oils. So that might be something we could definitely try. Um, we're always up to trying anything we can, for sure. I used um, catnip with the strawberries, and that helped, too, by the way. Oh, they love catnip. I know, but it kept them out of the cucuculture beds. But yeah. of course, they won't grow in the winter. But well, uh, what was that person say? Look at that. They also hate lemongrass and lemon balm. Huh? We we do. Oh, grow both I remember those. cayenne. Yeah. When we planted something, strawberries. No, something that they were getting in terribly. What did we have? Patch. No, it was the potatoes. Was the potatoes? They were getting the potatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I coated on down yes. with cayenne, and that seemed to do the trick for the most part, as long as it didn't rain. Of course, when it rains, you have to go back out there and apply anything. Yeah. That's why the fence was the best. Why don't we try the lemongrass and lemon balm? The only thing is for cool crop, I don't know what we would do. We had to try the peppermint oil. Yeah, but then, it's like I said, when you when it rains, it's going to wash it all away and you're back out there yeah, spraying or applying. Yeah. Really, we got the cats to be barn cats, and they have done a great job in a way, and then they've got on our nerves in a way. So, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of like anything else. You always try to think, oh, are they worth their troubles or are they not worth their troubles? So, Well, I really got them more specifically for the squirrels. Yeah. Because we had a lot of trees where our cows are behind our greenhouse and pig area. All of that was trees three years ago. Mm -hmm. And the squirrels were coming out of the trees and they were getting my tomatoes. They were getting the strawberries. They were getting any type of fruit or vegetable that was right under those, not right under them, but a little ways out from those trees. 
And I was so frustrated. I can remember going out one day and all of my t green tomatoes had been nibbled on. And I was so aggravated. And I looked, I saw something out of the corner of my eye and I looked and a squirrel was going up the tree with a green tomato in its mouth. And I said, <laughs> uh, uh so the next year, the next year we cut all the trees down and the next year we got the two cats. Well, we were making a, we were making paddocks out of that area anyway. And it was just a pine, a little rest of a pine thicket. You know, we live in a pine thicket. If y'all have ever seen our farm, it's just basically a pine thicket we live in. So. Lemon balm, lemongrass, mm -hmm. mint all around my fences. Keeps ants, mice, snakes, and unwanted cats out of the yard. Yeah, we we had bad squirrels, but the more trees that we kind of took away from the main homestead helped. It and did we kept, help. We did. We kept, of course, a, a we got a big place that has pines in it where we're going to put the, the pig. So, I mean, there's still a lot of squirrels there. Yeah. Night Freedom Homestead. So squirrels was was the main interest for the cats. And I will say there's not been any squirrels up as close to the house as there was. Um, but then <laughs> it's a lose lose because the squirrels were eating the tomatoes and the strawberries and um, all the other <laughs> fruit producing Eat things. the squirrels. <laughs> And then the cats are digging up the lettuces, digging up the broccoli. So, I mean, it's like a, you it's can't just, win for losing. One thing I've learned, I think, more in farming and homesteading is as you're going to win some battles and lose some battles. And that's why we actually, Misty's got some uh, some strawberries in the greenhouse that are just unbelievably They're beautiful. beautiful. Um, so, when the outside ones are not doing as great, we have the inside ones. Uh, same way with the basil, same way with the tomatoes. Even though I'm bummed, my basil got killed. Yeah, truly, truly. I do still have some basil seeds that I'll plant again, probably the end of February. Rustic traditions. I mean, cats do do a good job. I and mean, we we don't have any mice around the house or anything anymore. But mm -hmm. again, they come with some some things too, you know. Okay. Elm Ruth said we didn't get any pecans this year because of the squirrels. Squirrels stew. I'm not <laughs> sure that I would be willing to try that, but I'm sure somebody around I've, the world would. We bait squirrel before. To I me, have, I I have not. He has. To me, any little animal, uh, I always think of like doves and, and quail. We bait doves and I've ate doves and quail. And a lot of times it's kind of like squirrel. You have to have so many to really make a meal, almost like brim fishing or white perch fishing. So I go for the bigger things where it's just one kill can do it all. So. My cats are lazy. I have to kill them. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's a good one, Loving Abby Farm. <laughs> Might have a nutty flavor. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I guess if they're eating the pecans, they might. The, gar uh, the gardener, uh, we actually, that's how I ate it. I ate fried squirrel with gravy uh, and biscuits, and I've ate it in a, in a stew once before. So I've never ate with scrambled eggs. That's a new one on me. I can remember my parents saying that when they grow, grew up, they used to would eat the squirrel brains. Ugh. I don't, I'm not an organ person. I'm, I like the meat. <laughs> I can remember them saying that they used to eat liver and stuff like that, too. I've never eaten a liver. I haven't. <laughs> That's like saying I'm going to eat, like, pig feet or something. Like, I just... I think I'll Misty, pass. if 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 times got bad, that's why we're planting a food forest with a uh, katuk and with uh, all these unique flowers and unique things because Misty would have to live off that kind of stuff. Moringa has more protein than some meat, so that's why we're growing those kind of things because Misty would have to have those kind of things. Vegetables versus and stuff. <laughs> some random animal. Like a while ago, we were hunting and uh, Aiden shot at a deer and uh, I think he missed it. Yeah, I think he was nervous. It's first year, first deer for the year. So anyways, when we were going through there, there was this rabbit. I promise you, he was like this big. He was a monster. <laughs> I told Aiden, I said, I should just go and just shoot him and then bring him home. He was like, Mom, we ain't going to eat that. Mom, we ain't going to eat that. Would I need a chicken-friendly rat eater. I'm not, I don't get into the, uh, I don't get into the, um, the organs. Uh, you know, I've tried them all. I've tried livers. I've tried gizzards. I've tried um, Chitlins, I've tried them all. And Crawfish them. brains, yes. Squirrel brains, no. Yuck, hate liver. I'm <laughs> not, I'm, and then some uh, Loving Ivy Farm said chicken liver is good. Crazy critters, I'm the same way. I mean, I, I'm just not a big organ meat person mm -hmm. just because the 
I can eat gamey deer. I can eat gamey fish, but I don't, for some reason, I just don't do organs. I mean, I can eat them, but it's just, I don't really care. Yeah, rat, I did. I have heard that rat terriers will like chase any type of little animal. Just chase it. My mom eats chicken livers. I can Ugh. only eat the meat. Yeah. I'm, just I, I'm not. Yeah. I don't think I can do that. I'm just scared that when Misty helps me butcher these chickens, she ain't going to eat the meat. Moringa so. is great. I actually got some moringa seeds several, several years ago and planted them. And my trees got, y'all can't see the tops of them, probably three feet tall, mm -hmm. two, three feet tall. We were not smart though, and we didn't know enough about it, and we left them out. Yeah, I left so. them out, and then it got cold, and they died. This year, though, we're going to put them in the greenhouse. Uh, I, I've, I've been watching a lot of uh, uh, a lot of Rob Canary, uh, you know, Rob Canaris and our Pete Canaris, sorry, and Rob Greenfield, um, and watching how they raise their moringa. So I think I'm going to do the same way, which them being in Florida climate, they can keep theirs out all year round. So we're going to put ours in the greenhouse. So. Mainly eat chicken livers and onions when my iron is low. <laughs> my iron will have to be really low. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you know, there are people out there that really like chitlins and like a Ugh. lot of stuff Ugh. that, I mean, I just, I think I would have to be on my, like, there's nothing else to eat. I don't like no chitlins now. Especially if somebody eats bull chitlins. Does anybody here eat bull chitlins? That's, that's nasty. <laughs> Neighbor's rat terrier would squat under my old tractor and kill any mice that ran out when I started it. That's pretty funny. Yes, Alan Farms. We um, I like hunting deer in the rut, but Aiden, my son, again the one you just saw, uh, we've been talking about him killing de uh, another deer this year. So we went to hunt because we've had a good bit of uh, does out, and it's doe season for us. So uh, he shot at one tonight, and like I said, I think his nerves got the best of him. So. All right, Karen. I'm with you there. I butchered the chickens, pulled the guts out and such, but it takes me a week before I'll eat the chicken. Okay. So we're supposed to be processing our first one the week hey, of Mustang Christmas. Sally. And I've already told Colby, I'll put on a smile and go get him a chicken and bring it to him. But I do not want to kill it. And I do not want to gut it. <laughs> and once he gets finished with all that stuff, then I'll spray it off, put it in the bag or whatever. But I'm so with you. If I had to actually rip the guts out of it, I would be done. Like, I don't think I probably would never eat. Chicken we bought um, again. We bought our um, we were going to do some reviews on some of the chicken butchering things. We, we bought a, um, some, some of the bags. We went on and bought the plucker today. We bought uh, we got a scalder coming. So you're going to see a lot That's of those our things. anniversary present. Yeah, ain't that cool? Uh, so what we're going to do, though, is we're going to review those. And that way you'll know if they're good or bad. And that way, if you choose to invest in some of those things, that'd be great. Um, M. Ruth, you know, I don't think we really have a roach problem. I don't, I don't remember seeing a lot of roaches around here. Uh, our pine trees are not sitting in our yard like they used to be. They're, when we built, they're pretty far out. I mean, when we built now, we built in a roughage of just a pine tree thicket. So, and, and just underbrush and some, some random growth. So, um, really old cutover, basically old pine cutover. But uh, where we cleared out, we cleared out pretty good. So, we're kind of off a little bit. So. Look, I saw something up here that was funny. Oh, the gardener said, I love fried pork or beef liver sandwich with mustard. Well, let's really make it nice with mustard. Well, <laughs> I like mustard, but not a lot. <laughs> Ooh, but I don't think I can handle that. <laughs> Unpolished garden he said, yep, not for me either. Penny of Plantation, Louisiana people do like a lot of uh, organs, but... Uh, I'm glad to know there's somebody else that don't eat them. So, <laughs> Karen, I'm gonna leave the Rocky Mountain oysters to y'all. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna be eating any of those anytime soon. I just can't get that out of my. I can't can't get there. Montana has a testy festy. <laughs> I can well, see my wife nibbling on saying, one. That's I know what she was saying there. Ah, uh, negative. Again, I have to go back to. I'm starving to death. There's nothing else to eat. I'm stranded on an island and all the fish are not available. I would have to be <laughs> almost dead. Oh, goodness. Rooster fries. <laughs> oh, goodness. 
Well, we are getting close to our hour. We don't want to go over. I'm going to leave it on the testy festy and uh, the hey, Rocky Mountain Oyster. So. <laughs> do y'all know? Hey, Hank, we're actually going to wrap it up, but thank you for know coming in. Home, homestead dad got his. Yeah, I think not no, homestead, homestead dad. Single dad. Single dad. Sorry. It's, not, it's one of the dads we know, but it's not. It's single dad. He is coming on now. So yeah. y'all try to catch Chris at single dad homesteading. Uh, I think he's back on tonight for sure. And uh, and we'll send Misty to a testy festy. And uh, that way she could try all the fun stuff there too. So yeah, she would struggle during eating in the apocalypse. I think she'd be eating that moringa up. So she'd be ah, just nibbling on it. <laughs> All right, y'all. I hope y'all have a great night. Thank y'all for coming by and keep up with our videos. Next, the uh, next few videos are going to be um, we've got to we're cutting up some firewood, of course, for um, the winter weather. Uh, we're going to be moving the broilers to the shocker night. We're going to be moving the little chicks to the the what we call the I guess the pullet house. We'll be moving the old mother hens. To their new permaculture chicken bed. So and we we're got a waiting lot. on the baby. And we're going to have a calf. Or I'm going to just buy one and act like we have one. So, so if you see the calf and it's like an Angus and it's supposed to be a jersey, just, just make believe it came from her. So. We'll surprise y'all. Surprise. <laughs> she had it in the night. Karen, let us know how the soap goes. Yes. We want to know. Please let us know how the soap goes. Thank y'all so much uh, for coming on. And uh, like I said, have a great night. God bless you. Go check out Chris at Single Dad. Happy homestead, y'all.